Hello Lulas, welcome back to my channel guys. If you're new to this channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, click the bell to be a part of the notification squad. Today I am showing baby Nevada. And Nevada, for some of you guys that may not know, she is the Jalen Skull by Georgia Picot. Picot, 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 Picot. And I am going to undress her. She's had on her little Christmassy like wear. And I'm going to attempt to put her in something else. It's crazy because when I, my babies, I get to a point where I don't want to cover them up. I don't want to change their clothes. I just have all these things. <laughs> and um, so they tend to wear the same thing for like ever. Let me see. Let me scoot her back a little bit. Yeah. And maybe you guys can her a little bit more let's see all right there we go all right so a lot of people <laughs> reached out to me and said hey if you ever sell this baby let me know um like a lot of people <laughs> um and I I will admit that I am one that will be like head over heels for a baby. I love when they have the wafer scent on them. Like her clothes, like once I take the clothes off of her, they smell so baby after she wears it. And then I put it on a baby that doesn't have the wafers and it still hold that baby scent. So it's really nice because it gets stuck in their clothes. Um, another nice trick that I, I learned from a friend, um, Summer is I put the downy uh or the uh what is it the what is it the draft um baby smell stuff beads in the um pouches in the drawers and when the clothes sit in there for a while they they pick up that scent on the clothes oh my gosh it's so amazing only problem is is that um I went to pull something out for Bryson to wear while he was here and I could not use it on him because, you know, newborns, they, it's not good to, you know, have those strong scents, you know, on them, around them and stuff. Because, you know, you don't know, they go to sneezing and all that good jazz or whatever. But anyway, but for our babies, it, it, it works so amazing. Um, I did pre-order one of these kits too, to paint myself. Um, because if I didn't mention, this one was painted by Angela Plicka. Um, so, yeah, but like I was saying, I do tend to sell my babies quite a bit. Um, I will be, like, madly in love with them, but have my eye on something else. Or, um, even sometimes I might just need the money. Because my babies are usually, um pretty pricey so I I look to sell them first before I bother with anything else but um right now I'm really enjoying her and I don't want to let her go so um yeah so but I will paint this gulp myself um in the future But I, I was torn if I should make it a boy or a girl. So I was thinking, well, since I I bought I pre-ordered the kit before I actually bought the, the baby. So um, I thought I'd just paint it myself, save myself some money. But then I couldn't resist. So I got this one. So I was like, well, I couldn't decide if this would be a boy or a girl. So the next one I will make as a boy. Um... And I'm pretty sure a lot of times these editions, they don't be like, um, they, when they say limited to be determined, that means that, um, it's going to be some more usually left once the kids come in. So, you know, I may order a second one just to be on the safe side. A couple, like I said, a couple of people contact me and it's funny. And I, and I say this and I'm not like bragging or trying to throw out how much money these dolls cost because I'm actually really like embarrassed to admit 
<laughs> that I spend the type of money I spend on my my dolls but um quite a bit of people reach out to me and they're interested in um this baby or some of my other babies but when I I don't typically talk price but when I disclose price to some of them just so they have an idea Sometimes I do it, out, I, I won't lie, I do it out of curiosity just to see if they still are interested after knowing the price. And um, quite a bit of them actually changed their mind. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, a lot of times, you know, to get the... the those are rare and, and unique ones now. I think one one thing that would make me sell her for sure is if the artist duplicate her. I have seen her do that with a few of the sculpts that she's done. She's made like two or three of the same, like the same style, same way, same kit. Um, she doesn't do it all the time, but I've seen her do it with a few of her uh, Gutter and Legler sculpts. Ah, oh, I mean, this is hard because I'm, I'm at an awkward angle. But um, that that would that would definitely make me want to sell her. Um, I don't particularly when I spend top dollar on a baby, I don't, I don't like when the artists um, duplicate their work. Um, I think it takes away from the value of the original baby because now that baby is not that as special because it's one just like it out there, if that makes sense. Um, and I know everybody have this, this thing where they like to say that artists cannot duplicate their work, but some of these artists can because they have a formula that they use and they have a set method that they use. I've watched one sculptor sculpt four kits exactly the same kit, the same exact way, shading in all the same exact places, um, all the markings in the same exact places. So I am not convinced by one little bit that um, I wish people would stop saying it now because it's not true. Um, artists can duplicate their work. And they do do it sometime. Um, I think it's a little bit harder to do when you when you paint with a lot of different colors and a lot of different skin tones. Um, some artists have like standard skin tones. Like they paint multiple skin tones, but they have a light skin, a dark skin, a medium. Like. Um, and I think it's kind of cool when you definitely you're painting primarily for a business to sell and stuff like that. I think it's kind of cool because you can be like, you want the rose color or you want the, you know, they've named them. Like I reach out to some of these top artists and they've named their skin tones and you can request a specific skin tone and they can, they can put that same skin tone on whatever baby you want, um, which is nice. Um, I cannot <laughs> and it's probably because I don't save my paint I don't it's not that I, I'm trying to say I'm special or anything it's just probably I'm less specialer <laughs> if anything because I don't I don't know how to um, because I don't write down my colors and I don't um, I just mix whatever I have at the moment and however I feel at the moment. So it's it's very hard for me to say, okay, I use this and I use that. Because sometimes, like I showed you guys when I was painting one time live, I just pour whatever's left out of one color into another stack, another color and just keep going from there and, and just keep building my color from there. And how I, sometimes I build my layers by building my paint, if that makes sense. So like say, if I got three colors already mixed up in this one you know, bowl, 
and then I want it to go lighter or darker, I put a different color in there to lighten it or darken it. Or if I think it needs a little bit more red or yellow, then I add that and then I just go from there. And then once I'm done with that, then okay, now I need it to be a little bit darker, a little bit this, and I just keep doing it. And then so I don't then I don't never remember what you know how much of this was in there, how much of that was in there. Like it's it's crazy, but isn't she adorable? Like she is, she is my little sunshine. I love this baby. I love her. I really, really love her. Um, I really adore the sculpt. I, I wish I had a painted the the silicone blank. I, um, um, Jazz had one up recently for sale, um, that was painted by Georgia herself. But I wanted to paint this kit myself, as a blank. Um, I really did. And um, I didn't. I didn't do it because I wasn't sure of her silicone at the time. Um, and I, I still, I still sometimes consider myself still new to it. And I, I, I feel like I am still new to it. I'm still learning. Like I know certain people's silicone and how it works and what colors kind of work on them and how it takes to paint. But when it comes to like different different um pores and stuff like that i have not mastered everybody poor like some some artists can they can paint on anything like they can um you can send them a, a glow worm and they'll paint on it i i can't i don't do that i can't do that um i have some little purple socks and i i but i don't know where they're at that's just like these for the babies, I have to find them. I don't know what I did with them. But, um, yeah, so, anyway, um, I can't wait to paint this one, though. And then I'm kind of scared in a way because I can see how this, you can get it wrong, too. So, I, I say that, but then I am a little nervous. And it's always hard for me sometimes when I have a baby that I really love and the painting is perfection. And then I paint behind, it's like, how, how do you paint <laughs> something when you have, you know, this, this one so beautiful and perfect here? Like, you know what I mean? Type thing, but that's me and my crazy pressures that I put on myself. I was um, talking about you know, the pressure of customs the other day. And that's my whole thing. I always worry, like, am I going to, is it going to be good enough for the mommy? Is they, are they going to like it? You know, type thing. But, um, you know, it usually works itself out. There we go. And look, and she looks good on the darker background, actually. So, yeah, I love her. And I love her with pacifiers. I don't have a pacifier in here. Oh, I have this one. <clears throat> It's not modified, but usually, like, she she has an open, a pretty deep open mouth, too. Oh, actually, she can almost take that full thing. Wow. She can almost take that full, full nipple. Oh, I got to go find some more of these. Because I would, like, the other one is so thin, I just bend the tip of it. And then I just put it in her mouth. But yeah, this one actually, you know what? I can probably push it in a little bit like this and then give it to her. Like I hate cutting like the really cute ones. I hate cutting the nipples on it. Because then too, like if you're out and you've cut the nipple and then the pacifier falls out, it it's a dead ringer that is fake. But anyway, I don't want to force anything. But yeah, but yeah, it so it actually it actually does work pretty cool. I like it. <laughs> so yeah, um, I guess I'll see you in the next video. I am like, I guess I'm a little tired, guys. But 
I hope you guys enjoyed seeing her. I haven't combed her hair in I don't know how long. And it just is so natural. I, I really wish I could find me some curly mohair like this. The, the, the really curly mohair. Like tight curls. It's just... Let me see. Let me turn her around this way so you guys can see. It is so hard to find this type hair. Let me see. Like that curl it is so hard to find that curl in my hair. I really wish I could find some. So people tell tell you that the hair is curly and then you you root with it and it's not curly. It kind of sucks. Um, but yeah. Anyway, see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.